If you're looking for a wireless in-ear monitor system for your church or for your band and you're on a budget, man have I got something to show you today. I've just been sent this. This is the new uh, Anleon S3 wireless in-ear monitor system. And this thing is an absolute powerhouse for its price. Um, I'm super excited to show this to you today. So stay tuned, we are gonna go through all the ins and outs of this thing, everything it can do um, and how to do it. We're gonna do range tests, audio tests, the whole lot. So check it out and we'll get into it. Okay, so we've got a lot to get through because there's just so much that this thing can do. Um, so I'm gonna talk fast. Uh, we will try and get through it as quickly as we can so we're not um, holding you up too long, but but do watch right through because uh, there's, there's a lot of stuff you're gonna to wanna to know about this. So to start with, just real quick, let's look at what you get. Of course, you get a transmitter, nice gloss front on that. Um, I think that's probably like a Perspex. Um, you get uh, your set buttons there. Anytime you see a unit with this type of button configuration, you're, you're starting to think more high-end stuff rather than the old basic just turn knob like the S2s had. Um, you get a headphone output with its own volume control. Uh, that is real handy for fault finding if you happen to be a sound tech and you want to find where a problem is. You can plug a separate set of headphones in there so you can find out if your problem is from this unit onwards nice and handy uh, you might also use that for recording you'll see some guys on youtube will post a video and you will hear their in-ear mix well you could do that out of there okay um, you could also do that out of um, your audio loop um, i imagine um, but your audio loop you can actually use um, for daisy chaining these units together as well and you have got two inputs here okay so you can just use one okay and then the belt pack will split that back into a stereo signal still um, which the old unit didn't seem to do very well so but but this one will uh, and you can also put in there two separate signals and there's a very good reason why you would want to do that which we will talk about shortly um, power input there and antenna goes on here which is just a bnc connector and this is all nice and solid nice and firm connection there goes on nice and easy clips into place and I like the look of this antenna because it looks more like the generation one antenna which had a really good range on it okay um, all steel all steel around here front back top sides um, and just that nice gloss looking perspex on the front uh, screws on the side there that you could potentially jimmy something up to rack mount it if you were wanting to do that. You also get a belt pack which is also now steel bodied. Okay, um, also has an LCD screen uh, and nice solid belt clip like they've always had. Uh, nice long antenna there, phone port in the top, your on switch just as you turn that up, that click turns it on okay and then you get two lights there you get power okay that green power light will go red if the battery is going flat and the radio frequency light will be green when it's receiving transmission both handy things for diagnosis again okay there's a few buttons on here as well that we will look at what they do shortly okay you also get a set of in-ears again um, they stopped doing that with the generation 2 uh, but again with the S3 you now get um, a set of in-ears handy to have just chuck in your bag as a spare um, not that I'd use them all the time they don't have ear hooks how good do they sound who cares because you're going to use your own in-ears okay? um, and while I'm on that check these out these are the new KZ EDX. Okay, so I use the AS10s, I've had them for years. Um, quad drivers. Sound wise, these things 
sound the same to me with a single driver. These things are way, way cheaper um, and they're solid as, and the main thing is they're actually way more comfortable in your ears. I find that anyway. Um, so, so now I'm actually using these things instead of my AS10s. So I'll chuck an Amazon link for these down in the description. There will also be a link for the unit itself. Um, those links are Amazon affiliate links. That means if you use them to buy anything on Amazon, um, I will get a small percentage of your purchase, which will help me to make more videos, review more stuff. So help me out as well. Uh, just to disclose that, and also while we're disclosing stuff, just to let you know that this unit I'm reviewing today was sent to me by Anleon um, because I've reviewed uh, their S2 units off my own back and they like those reviews um, and the imparti impartiality of those reviews um, where I, I talked about what the problems were and that sort of thing and that, then they've been able to go and rectify those so they've asked me again to do an impartial review on this one okay and it will be impartial if there's a problem i will absolutely tell you about it but right now i'm pretty excited that this is going to be a great unit from what i've seen out of the others okay so um let's get a bit more in depth now with these parts i've got it plugged in now um you do of course get a power supply make sure you tell them um what type of plug you need what what country you're from um, so that you get the right one for your country so you're not going to have to use an adapter they will have all the different types of plugs available um, so uh, let's talk a bit more about the features on this um, and then we'll get up to a close-up of the screen and see what we can do in there um, so uh, one of the great things that this does um, is it sends a reference signal uh, when it's turned off and what that does is it stops you getting horrendous interference if there's a whole lot of um, RF rubbish around in the atmosphere um, it stops it from picking that up uh, when the unit is off and not sending a signal okay um, that is handy um, I've been in a situation where um, somebody turned a microphone off in, in an event where there was a whole lot of RF signal around and the system actually picked up that signal and just right through my whole system um, and I'd, I'd really been dropped in it because I wasn't actually doing sound the guy who was doing sound had gone somewhere else and I was left standing at the desk trying to work out uh, where it was coming from um, so that that is a, a helpful um, a tool as well tool protection I suppose um, so uh, this audio loop here, what that does is that sends a replication of what's going in here. So if I send a signal into the right, I can link it out of the right, getting the same signal that's going in, okay, without affecting, uh, without whatever's done on the front affecting it, basically. Um, so, yeah, so if you wanted to record your in ear mix. That would be a great way to do it or you can use it to actually link that signal coming in to one of these and link that through to another unit okay um, let's get up close on the screen okay um, so i'm recording this on a separate camera now um, just because it's easier to pick the screen up um, so this is what our screen looks like Okay, when you've got audio playing, you will have bars along here showing your left and right signal um, audio frequency there, and it will show you if it is peaking out and you need to turn the gain down, um, which is something we can now do with this unit, which we'll show you shortly. Okay, on and off button. What I like about this is that it doesn't work if you just press it. Okay, so if it gets accidentally bumped, you're not going to end up with your unit off okay you got to hold it down and then it'll turn off hold it down to turn it on cool um, and okay so our frequency there this unit uh, has frequency options from uh, 518 through to 554 uh, there are other ranges available there is a 626 to a 664 and an 830 to an 866. 
Um, so just make sure that you get the right one to be legal in your country. Um, and if you're unsure, um, Google it to, to see what the laws are in your country. Or if you're really stuck, um, just drop me a comment below. Tell me where you're from and I'll try and find out for you. Okay. Um, so here if we go set, we can change through. So that's going backwards. We go back to H10. Okay, it starts at A1. Okay, so each letter has various amounts of frequencies available in it. Okay, there is a total of 86 different frequency options. Okay, which is great just to have lots of options, making sure you're staying off the same frequencies as the likes of your wireless microphones and all of that stuff. Okay, um, so that was just pressing set once and then up and down arrows. If I press set twice, I get this option and I can go mono or stereo. So if I only have one cable plugged in, I just want to be on the mono option. Um, otherwise, if I've got two cables plugged in, I want to be on stereo. Okay, uh, and then I get this page, sensitivity. Okay, so 0 dB, minus 8, minus 16, minus 24. And uh, basically what that means is if the signal coming into this is too loud and I need to knock it down, uh, I can do it there. Nice and simple. Okay, and it means just when you're using stuff with different systems and different venues, then you can real easily adapt um, what you need to on here uh, just to match it to the system. Okay, real handy tool. Okay, so now let's look at what we can do on our belt pack. Okay, so um, you'll see there the RF signal light is red, meaning we're not getting signal, and that's because we're on the wrong channel. So all we're going to do is we are going to go, um, this is going to be hard doing the whole mirror thing, set, and then I'm going to change, oh, I've got to be quick. So you got to press it and then while the frequency is still up, flick, flick through um, your channel. So it'll, it'll give you a short amount of time to do that. And now that we are on the same channel as our transmitter, we have now got a green light there. Cool. And what else can we do? Uh, so if we press twice, now we've got... I've got to get to my arrow keys. Frequency. What am I pressing? Set. Okay, mode. Ah, got to do it quick. Focused or stereo. Okay, so what that means, um, focused is if I take, if I'm taking one feed in, to my transmitter, uh, then I want to put put it, set this to focus, so it's taking that that one feed as a mono feed, and then it's separating it back to stereo for my ears. Okay, if I'm running stereo, like running two cables in, then I want to be on the stereo setting. Now the purpose of that is, um, say I'm say I'm playing guitar and my keyboardist is over there, and my drummer and my bass player are over here. I might want to okay, take a stereo feed for my in-ears, and I want different mixes in them, because I want might want more keyboard on my right-hand side, because that's, that's where he's standing, and more of these other instruments on the side that they're on, um, in the corresponding ear, uh, just so it feels a bit more real as to where stuff is coming from. Okay, um, so so that's a great way to use um, stereo unit. Okay, and I'll, we'll just look at our other option there in our set. High boost, um, which I have off. Um, I find by boosting the highs really just um, just adds noise, basically. Just high end noise. Um, so I prefer to have that off. 
Um, in terms of uh, audio quality, we, we will look at an example of this, but um, I know people in the past have said with the S2 models that they felt they didn't carry the low end. This thing definitely carries low end, um, which is great if you're a bass player or, or a drummer. Okay, um, so now here's the real cool thing. So, uh, and this, this is what audio guys do with all in-ear units, right? Um, whether it's Sennheiser or whatever. Because we've got this balance, okay? So I can go left 15. Left 15 is now I'm panned fully left. If I go right 15, I am panned fully right, okay? So now, what I can do is I can take two of my desk channels, two, like two of my um, returns, and, uh, sorry, sends, sends or returns, two of my monitor feeds anyway, two of my monitor outputs, and I can plug two completely separate mixes in here, one into left, one into right. I can then have two belt packs, okay? So I can have two different guys on the stage with a belt pack each. One of them can be panned fully left and one can be panned fully right. So now I'm using this one transmitter to send two completely unique signals to two separate guys that are receiving them completely separately. And then all I've got to do is um, set this to the focus setting, okay? So that, that takes their one feed that they're receiving and sends it to both ears okay so team up with a buddy <laughs> get an extra belt pack get this unit and you've got two sets of wireless in ears for one um so you know do that like you look at it that way you can if you can do two two at a time uh, then you look at how many of these units you need to put your whole team on wireless in ears and all of, all of a sudden uh, forget about hardwiring stuff man like what a waste of money that is when you can you can have your whole team on wireless in ears for you know a few of these units easy easy cool um, so yeah that's about it on the belt pack um, tons of channels to uh, choose from and you can see our signal light there signal lines there telling us how much signal we have got cool um, so let's uh, start listening to some audio okay so just before we get into our, our full audio test uh, where we will play you um, just the audio that this can carry in a direct feed um, what we're going to do is show you how this unit can send two separate signals to two separate belt packs like we just talked about. So what I've got is I've got a track uh, with two different parts. One of those parts is panned fully to the right. The other part is panned fully to the left. Okay, uh, and then in through our cable, we are coming one part into the left side, one part into the right side. Okay, uh, so basically those are two separate things going into each side of the transmitter. So first, um, just to show you what it sounds like, uh, we are pan dead center in the middle on our pack and set to stereo, like we normally would be. And this is what it sounds like. Okay, so let's say now I want this to be picked up by two belt packs. Here's what I'm gonna do. Person number one, going to take our minus arrow here and we are going to press it until we reach reach L15. That is now panned fully left. We're going to use our set button, press it twice and that stereo mode we want to change to focus just like so and now this is what that person is going to hear. Okay, and just like that, but opposite, the other person is now going to set their belt pack 
to R15. Okay, it's still on the focus setting, and this is what that person is going to hear. Okay, so obviously um, both belt packs need to be set to the same frequency because this is still sending out the one signal. It's just sending it out as a left side and a right side uh, like it would with any stereo feed. But instead of this now receiving it as a full stereo feed, uh, what it's doing is it's receiving either just the left side or just the right side and then re-splitting that so it goes to both your ears. Cool, so now we will listen to a straight audio feed. Just keep in mind, um, if you're listening on a laptop or, or a phone, um, the, the speakers are not going to give you a true uh, indication of the, the sound quality this can carry. Um, so plug in a decent set of headphones so you can get an idea of what it really sounds like. Okay, I hope you had a good set of headphones on so you, you could really hear the audio quality that this thing can carry. Um, great low end, um, great highs, the, the whole, across the board, uh, just, yeah, great sound that this thing can actually carry, which is, is really comforting for musicians. Um, so next thing we're going to do is going to be our range test. This is always the fun part. Um, see how just how far we can go with this thing um, before it starts cutting out uh, as always we will do uh, the two tests um, the first one out here where I live in the in the country where we can do a bit more of a straight line and it's easier to see the physical distance I'll also be measuring uh, the distance with a range finder so I can tell you exactly how far it is um, and then the second test we will do will be in town in the venue um, I'll go up to the stage uh, where I normally use this thing and then um, beyond that we'll see how far down the street we can get um, which is always fun with, with my backpack full of audio gear recording and my laptop walking down the street with all the cars driving past but we're gonna do it so uh, let's see how far we can go okay so uh, when you hear me speaking uh, this is actually recorded over the top um, what you're hearing in terms of music is exactly what is coming out of the pack um, minus a little bit of um, heariness with cables uh, banging around in my bag um, but other than that this is the straight feed Okay, so this is sort of around the 70 odd meter mark. Um, we are coming up to power lines as well. Um, this is closer to 80 meters here. Uh, we always lose signal as we go through the dip in the drive, th uh, driveway um, because it's basically through solid earth um, and a lot of it, so we will fast forward um, as we go through the dip in the drive there you can see the big transformer um, these are main power lines coming in and we're starting to lose it so we'll speed up and we're out the other side of the dip here and this is around the 200 meter mark
Okay, so we keep pushing it. Um, you can hear that background noise um, getting louder now. Okay, so now we're really losing it, but we'll be over 250. Now we're in town. Okay, so this is on the stage. This is um, around, um, sort of between the 20 and 30 meter mark, which is easy. Uh, and we will head out for a walk. Um, I do need to get out into the hallway, just so we can uh, get access further back behind the stage. Cool. So this is in the hallway now, heading further back, and this is the side door to our stage there. So that's the level our stage is at. And now we're actually three walls deep now, uh, which I'll explain more at the end of the video as to why that is. And we will head out the back door of this room and head off down the street. going through four walls and we're currently around the 80 meter mark that's our building there and where that gable comes out on the side low down our desk is further back in the building than that going down see how far we can get so we're getting the, the odd little bit of drop out here Okay, so uh, those are our range tests. Um, you'll see uh, sort of like, you know, up to 50 meters. No no issues at all. Um, maybe around that sort of 70 um, in my straight line test, which wasn't much of a straight line because I have to walk around the driveway. I had a little bit of a glitch there. Um, out to 100 meters sort of was right again. Um, and then we pushed it. And we went out to like that 200 meter mark um, and if you were really desperate uh, you could get away with that um, but reality is you're never going to do that um, and then in town we were out to around 130 meters but that was also going through four walls um, because we we're from the sound desk to our stage there's a false wall behind our stage and then there is a wall on the end of that building that next part of the building you saw me walk in is actually a completely separate building so there's another wall starting that building and then uh, the outside wall obviously 
and then we were 130 meters down the road um, at our furthest point um, so yeah if, I mean if you absolutely had to but here's the thing with range you you're not going to do that um, any units wireless microphones any of that stuff you, you're never going to run them at those distances um, 50 meters absolute tops that would um, that would be yeah the absolute limit for me um, but more more realistically the the odd 30 meter mark anything over that you're going to run monitors all your microphones everything's going to be running just straight side of stage um, and then hardwired down the back that's the way you're going to do it um, that's the way anybody does it in a large venue um, if you don't and you're in a large venue that that's how you should be running all your stuff um, because yeah you're going to have all sorts of issues if you're trying to run all your wireless gear over long distances cool um so next we are going to do a real instrument test so we um this is in the venue i couldn't share my full in-ear mix uh just because copyright issues because we do cover songs um but i'll just jump on a few instruments real quick and you'll hear what each one sounds like um the kick drum on the drums in this um, was mixed a bit weird this day like it was it was a little bit reverby I think the reverb from the drums was um, been sent through my ears or something like that but but you'll you'll hear anyway and get an idea of what you're gonna hear <laughs> Okay, so that was what live instruments sound like through this unit. Particularly impressed with the bass. Um, I play bass um, most of the time. Uh, that's like my main instrument. Uh, so having that great bass feed, I, like I even have a, I have a big amp um, sitting next to me, big 8x12 Trace Elliott, and I kept turning that down thinking it was, it was real loud, but it was actually just great in your feet and um, I just I actually really enjoyed it um, this just carries so much better sound quality than the, the older units so talking um, price uh, there is an Amazon link in the description below uh, and if you click that you'll jump straight to this unit and currently on there it is $2.99 US okay so it's not as cheap as the cheap cheap units okay uh, but this is not comparable to the cheap cheap units anymore okay uh, the old and Leons that were cheaper and actually still are cheaper uh, they were they were more in that class I suppose you'd say uh, this is now jumping up a class okay to jump up another class from this you've got to get up into the Sennheisers and the Shores uh, but you're going to be paying uh, almost a thousand dollars more uh, to get into that that field so this is a great middle of the road product um, to, to get into so uh, the one thing that I, I think could use a little bit of work um, I like to I like to give some feedback so so we can work on stuff and, and get it sus next time which these guys are great at doing um, I, I felt like there was um, maybe a little bit of um, interference at times okay but uh, just hear me out here this I think that a lot of it has to do with the country I'm in and this frequency range so this is the 500 megahertz frequency range which is the one you want if you're in the US okay um, and that's why we're reviewing this one because most of our viewers are in the US um, but here in New Zealand we're better off with the 600 megahertz range um, just some of our radio frequencies and stuff well this range is still legal here um, it's still in our legal range but I because I've had a 500 megahertz range uh, unit before 
and it, and that too I felt like it was a little bit more susceptible to picking up some of the RF signals. Now the building that we're in uh, is like the perfect storm for for interference. Like the main power feed that comes into the building runs right under the stage above ground and it so that magnetic field's just there. We have all sorts of trouble. The guitar pickups pick it up and, and all sorts. It causes all sorts of headaches. Um, and radio frequency in the area is just all over the place. Uh, we've even had guitar amps pick up literally the radio. People talking on the radio, actually it starts coming out of the guitar amp because um, that stuff's just around. And But my experience with the interference was that I could only hear it if there was nothing else in there. Okay, as soon as the instruments were playing or anything at all was playing, um, then there was no interference. Okay, it was only when it was quiet that I could, that I could hear um, a bit of interference in there. And it was just when I stood in a certain spot. As soon as I moved a bit to the right, a bit to the left, a bit forward, a bit back, and got out of that particular spot, uh, then it went away. So um, I think that's definitely an environmental thing, um, but I maybe the, we I don't know maybe there's some way to shield against that um, a little bit better or something. But uh, yeah, I did try like because we've got all of our G4 mics and G4 in ear units, so I ran all those up and put this around all of them. No interference. I could get a little bit if I put the tip of this right on the antenna of the G4 microphone, then I can get a bit there, but I mean, you're never going to actually do that. <laughs> um, and I did find with some power supplies, uh, some power cables, which again are different in our country than they're going to be in the US. But anyway, if I put this like right on the cable, I, I could pick up a bit of the magnetic field. Um, so there may be a way that w that we can improve on that, that we can just um, shield against it a little bit better. Whether maybe we've gone um, increase the sensitivity to increase the range, I don't know. But um, I'll I'll leave that with the guys at Anleon um, as as a work on. But hey, if that's the only thing that um, that I can bring up, then everything else. And that, that's a big, that's a big huge maybe because, like I say, I've had trouble with the 500 megahertz before here in New Zealand, um, and I think that's probably the biggest part of it. In the US, I think you're going to be fine. Um, everything else works works great. Um, also, notice actually, just a quick side note, um, because I talked about the limited range in the last one, and I talked about changing the antenna. This antenna actually is a BNC connection. So, so it's easy to change the connector. You don't have to go out uh, to change the antenna. Not that you need to, because this one, as you saw in the range test, works perfectly fine. But if you were wanting to chuck something else on there, easy with a BNC. Cool. So my opinion, great unit. Um, jump on Amazon, check it out, grab it, try it. Um, Feel free to leave comments below um, for your experiences in your country. Um, ask questions. I, I always try and answer questions as, as best as I can to the best of my knowledge um, to help you out. Don't forget to click a like on this video because once again, this is the new unit. Um, so we want people liking this video uh, just to help us show up a bit higher up in the searches. Um, so that when people are looking for new units, they find the newest model rather than the old ones. Um, so click a like and uh, click a, sus a subscribe while you're at it. We do a bunch of gear reviews, um, instrument lessons and song tutorials and stuff. So, so check out our stuff and uh, become part of our team. Thanks for watching. Thank you for your time. Um, You've done well, you've really done your homework if you've carried on and watched through this far. Thank you very much and we will see you in the next video.